Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday, the 4th of November 2022. In today's Mill News, we have interview with Zion Fleming from London News Online, the South London Press. Zion Fleming on his training ethic, wanting Netherlands to face England in the World Cup and why he's demanding more from the start of his Mill career. Zion Fleming is less than five months into his Mill career, but the club's record signing has already made an early impression an early impression in the championship. The twenty four year old Amsterdam born attacker has five goals in his first fifteen appearances following his one point seven million pounds move from Fortuna Sittard in late June. The Hugh averaged that over the course of a forty six game season and Fleming would finish on sixteen goals. Four more than Benica Bobby was top of the line scoring shots in the previous campaign, highly respectable. Whoa, hold your horses there. He hasn't even done it yet. You say, well, if he carries on at the rate he's going, well, what if he doesn't? If you had asked me at the start of the season, uh, I'd, if I'd be happy with five goals by the end of October, then I'd have said yes, Fleming told the South London Press. But once you have those five goals, you always look at the moments you could have scored. For example, I didn't score against Huddersfield on Saturday. I didn't have a chance, but I'm like, fuck. It's a game where I should have really wanted to help the team out with one or two goals and win us the game. Five goals is not bad for this time of year, but you always want more. Uh, right now, I'm happy. I'm kind of satisfied. But on the other hand, I'm also not. It's mixed feelings, really. The training ethic of the Dutch man, Fleming and German striker, Andreas Vogelsam, who also signed in the last transfer window from Union Berlin, have been publicly commended by Lions boss Gary Rout. He talks about the pair helping to drive standards in the group, often staying out on the Calmont Road training pitches after a session had been completed. It's mostly to do regular finishing, said Fleming, of his extracurricular activity. That's what I tend to do most, if your body allows you, uh, Sometimes you have to be a bit smart as well on certain days after a game. Take a bit of rest. I'll always tend to do a bit of finishing after training. And then after that, a few free kicks to top it off. Especially the day before a game. Because we've got a bit more time to do so. It's not free kicks all the time because that's a very small part of the game. The normal finishing is way more important. But Fleming's focus on small details can also be seen on a match day. The former Ajax youngster is not superstitious, but one habit is to take a few strikes of the ball around the edge of the penny box after the warm-up is over. I just feel after that I've done everything to prepare me for the game. Uh, if I don't do it and we get a free kick, then maybe it won't be my first ball in that area of the day. So it feels good to have a shot, at least one or two. It doesn't really matter if they go good or bad, uh, just that it's not the first one of the day. Millwall fans instantly labelled Fleming the Bermondsey Burkham after the sign. Fleming has talked about Kevin De Bruyne being the player he most admires. Manchester City star scored a sensational free kick last weekend down Leicester City, so can the Lions number 10 learn any tricks just by watching him off TV? I think you could, especially with moments like this. Free kicks are isolated moments, said Fleming, but he does it with a different technique than I normally go with. In the end, it's up to you really what you do, uh, you are comfortable with, and not try to copy too many other players. I also don't like to study other players too much because I want to do whatever comes into my mind and be free when I'm on the pitch, not think too much. One thing that is instinct now for Fleming is his muscle flex pose. After scoring a nod to UFC fighter Nate Diaz, that has made the transition from the Eredivisie to the Championship. I had just come back from a long injury half a year or a year before that, where I'd grown a lot, and that's why I needed to get to know my body again, because I was 20 centimeters bigger all of a sudden, said Fleming. When everything was back in balance, Ajax still didn't pick me. Uh, that celebration was a symbol of keep fighting. Uh, because Nate Diaz did the same at uh, one particular time against uh, Conor McGregor. He got beaten up in the first few rounds, but still choked him out. 
it started as a one-time thing really i got stuck with it kept doing it it is what it is uh, Fleming's first goal in all colours came in a two-on win of a black pool in September. But initially, a number of media outlets credited it as their own goal. I keep a damn Grimshaw. The EFL confirmed a couple of days later it had been officially credited to Fleming. And that referee Darren Bond had marked it down at the time as his goal. Uh, the only doubt for me was whether the ball was over the line or not. Uh, luckily, we have the goal line technology in the championship. When the referee said it was a goal, I was 100% sure it was my goal. I saw what happened with the ball. I was very surprised when the goal wasn't given to me in the first place. Mill only have two more fixtures remaining, starting with struggling whole city at the den tomorrow before the league shuts down for the World Cup after their trip. The Preston North End on November the 12th. The Lions do not return to competitive action until December the 3rd at Sunderland Stadium of Light, a match that had been postponed due to the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I find it funny that it's such a big deal here, uh, because for me it's nothing more than normal, said Fleming of the temporary fixture freeze. In Holland, uh, we would have a winter break one month later in December. Uh, the league would always stop for something like three weeks so that you could have either a week or ten days off depending on the schedule. Uh, there would be two weeks of training and you got back in again. Uh, in the Netherlands, other European countries, it's just normal to have a short winter break. It's good for the players as well to get out of there for a bit, refresh physically and mentally, so that you can come back uh, ready to go again. The only thing is that the timing here November is a bit early in the season. If you do it how we do it normally in, in Europe, the last weekend before Christmas we stop and everyone tends to like it. Uh, you think, good, we've got the first half of the season done now and we go into the second half. Fleming will tune in to see how his nation plays in Qatar. Uh, I expect them to win the group. Uh, after that, it's a bit of luck with the country to face. Uh, the Netherlands will also have a good side, so they can go there to be competitive, uh, even against the favourite countries. I really don't know, uh, because our main players are not playing everything at their club. Uh, Van Dijk is but Frankie de Jong and Memphis Depay are struggling a bit at Barcelona. Wijnaldum is injured at Roma. It, it can go either way. It would be nice if they play England. It will go orange all in the city. And there you go, that was uh, Zion Fleming there. Being brought to life. And we have another piece that I've taken, it seems I've had an interview in, and they've spun it into two stories. So they've got this one here uh, from uh, saying LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Mill Zion Fleming could see the funny side of Huddersfield fans pinching his towel he uses before throwings. Millwall attacker Zion Fleming could see the funny side of the Huddersfield Town supporters stole the towel he uses for throw-ins. The 24-year-old quickly realised what had happened when he went to dry the ball for taking one of his long throw-ins and sat his 1-0 away loss. Uh, if it's wet, you can't throw it as far, Fleming told the South London Press. There were towels there to have a better grip on the ball. I did it the first time, and when I came back the second or third time, I saw the towel was gone. I looked... Behind the hoarding, uh, and they all started laughing. To be fair, it was good banter. I find it quite funny. I also showed that to to those fans. Uh, I kind of laughed a bit uh, with them and said, "Ah, you you got me there." The next time I came back, the towel was there again. Fleming's older brother told him to work on his throwings when he was a youngster, feeling it could be another tool in his armory. I never really used it because I always played in the middle of the park. Said Fleming, who became the Lions record signing when he joined for £1.7 million in the summer. At Fortuna, I played one game slightly on the right and I found I could still do it. Uh, when I came here, I didn't expect it to be my job. I thought there would be lots of other players who could throw it farther than me. Uh, I don't think we scored out of it yet, but we've got a good physical team. Uh, if you can get the ball into the goal, then it can cause some carnage there. It puts the other team under pressure instead of giving them an easy press from the side. So there you go, Zion Fleming speaking to you, South London Press. 
uh, and I'm sure you could probably read uh, that interview in the paper if you would buy it from the news agent. Now, moving on to this story about tomorrow's opponents. Whole city appoint new boss ahead of Millwall clash. Liam Rossini will face the Lions in his first game in charge for his new club. Whole city have appointed a new manager ahead of their trip to identify Millwall. The Tigers sacked former boss Shota Avaladze at the end of September after a poor start to the championship campaign, giving the caretaker Andy Dawson almost an entire month to take them out of the relegation zone. Owner Akunil Kali has now moved to bring back former player Liam Rossini as their new head coach with his first clash in charge of the club, coming away at Millwall. As a player, Rossini made 144 appearances for Hull across five seasons in the Championship and in the Premier League. He retired in 2018 before taking on the coaching role with Brighton's under-23s and then Derby County. After manager Wayne Rooney departed following their relegation to League One, he took over as full-time boss, but he was relieved of his duties in September before leaving the club following the arrival of Paul Warren. The seniors returned to the MKM Stadium. It comes less than 48 hours after Hull's 3-1 home defeat to Middlesbrough, a result which leaves them 20th in the championship table. Yes, so they have a new manager, which is... This is always happening to us where we play a team after they've just got a new manager. Sometimes it goes for us, sometimes it goes against us. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. But let's have a look at the historical record between Millwall and Hull City. So Millwall versus Hull City. Very first game was way back in the 15th of September 1928. Long, long time ago. We had... Uh, Game in 1930, then 1934, then a massive gap around about 30 years. The next game in 1962, and what a wallop we won. We wazzed them 5-1. Is that a word? I don't know. I'm going to keep going. Um, we beat them 5-0 in 1985 on the 28th of December. Um, if you look, you can see there's very few red L's in this list of games at Millwall. Um, 1963, we lost. 1968, we lost. Uh, 1986, 2013. So we have only lost on four occasions at home to Hull City in these probably what 25 or so games. So this is not a game we lose. It is not a game we lose. It's a game we win. Uh, regularly win. Regularly win quite comfortably. Although, although having said that, recently there have been a number of draws. 2017, 0-0 draw, 2018, 2-2 two -two draw, and 2019, 1-1 draw. But, of course, as was mentioned in the previous um, story about Hall's new manager, they were in the Premier League. So they were in the Premier League, they've come down. So they've had a bit of uh, success, come down. And now we're in the same level, in the same league. But still, they're not beating us at the den. They're drawing. But they still haven't quite got it in them to beat us at the dead. And now it seems like they may or may not be heading to League One. Which uh, we shall see. But uh, not doing very well in this league, are they? Now let's move on to whoscored.com. Um, so let's switch this up. Go like that. Here are the last six games between Millwall and Hull at Millwall. Uh, two wins for Millwall, three draws, and one win for Hull. So, like I said, there are quite a few draws recently. Um, in terms of goals, over the six games, seven goals for Millwall, six goals for Hull, and eight, eight yellow cards for us, 12 for them, and one red card in the 2019 game. Um, all of these are uh, league games, except for the FA Cup game. Uh, third round, it looks like, 6th of January 2019, uh, which we won 2-1. I'm not sure, but I believe that that may, that may have been George Long's debut as well, wasn't it? Or not, the game that he played, uh, 
that he started for the first foot. I'm pretty sure that was. Because he, he got given the cup games. Um, or maybe I'm completely wrong about that. I don't know. Uh, so here's the tables as they stand now. Seven points between us, but they are 21st. And we are ninth. They have won six games. Drawn two, but lost ten. We have won eight, drawn three, lost seven. Now, they've scored 21 goals. We've only scored 22. They have conceded a massive 35. So it seems defence is their problem. Now, they've got a manager now who was a defender. Can he shore up their defence? Will he make an instant change? Will he change the formation? Will he change personnel? What will he do to shore up the defence for tomorrow's game? Will he come in? Will he just park the bus and try and get a point out of that game and see how everyone responds? You don't know, but uh, we shall see. Now, obviously, home form, we're very good. We're third in the league for home form. Uh, away form, they're 17th. So they've had two away wins this season. And it looks like... Um, their last two away games they won. So those two wins that you can see there, that the only two wins they've had this season away from home were the last two games. That's kind of worrying. Um, that is kind of worrying. Um, that was a 3-1 win at Hull, a 3-1 win at Blackpool, and a 4-2 win at Rotherham. But um, Blackpool have got a few problems. I think they've got injuries and suspensions. Uh, I think they had, they had like a crazy game when they had two players are sent off in the same game. And uh, Rotherham were not very good at it as well. So, And that was like a 2-4. That's that's a crazy scoreline, 2-4. So, not only that, but they've scored 11 away goals in 8 games. We've only scored 6 away, away goals in, in 9 games. So, they're not as shit as us are uh, on the road uh, recently. So. Form table though, overall, we are second in the form table. Uh, obviously we had the loss at Huddersfield and a nil-nil draw away at Birmingham, although that was our first away clean sheet of the season. So getting better, little steps, little steps. Uh, getting a clean sheet away in an away game, thumbs up. Getting a clean sheet and scoring a goal and then winning the game. That's two thumbs up. That's that's coming next. But hopefully against Preston, but we'll wait and see. We've got to win this game first. Uh, so, here's Mill's last uh, six home games. And here is Hull's last six away games, you can see here. So, obviously, before those two wins that they had, which were crazy, like they scored. For, so, then they must have gone more attacking. Now, here's the thing. If Rossini comes on, and just throws that in the window and goes more defensive, might not work for them. Because obviously something's happened. Because they, they went to Swansea, they went to Huddersfield, they lost 3 0 and they lost 2 0. So they failed to score in both of these games. So obviously they, they've changed it up and done something. And they ended up winning 3 1 at Blackpool and 4 2 at Robin. So I wonder, I, I, I haven't been watching their games, I haven't been watching the highlights, I don't know what they did. Hopefully someone at Millwall has and can figure out uh, how to, to stop that from happening. Even when they went to West Bromwich, they scored two goals in a 5-2 defeat. So, it, they do have... score. These score lines are very crazy and erratic. 5-2, 3-1, 3-0. 2-0 is the only normal one. And then you've got three, a 1-3 and 2-4. Whereas you look at Millwall, like 2-0 to us, 2-0 to them. 2-1, 2-0, 3-0, 2-1. That's your average normal normal score lines there. Um, so, now obviously we've got uh, Murray Wallace missing, and I think changes may be rung again. Um, obviously, we saw Savile come in and Bennett come in after they missed out against West Brom and Jaldean, but they came in for the. No, they didn't. What? Not West Brom. Who was the game before that? Who was the game before Birmingham? Was it West Brom? It was West Brom, wasn't it? 
uh, uh, Huddersfield, no, Huddersfield game. So obviously we made changes for Huddersfield game, and it wasn't very good. And then he brought in Savile, Bennett, and even and Murray Wallace made a surprise appearance for the Birmingham. And uh, I think we might see a couple of changes made again. Because you got three, uh, three games in, in, in a week. Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Um, so we'll see how, we'll see what changes get made. Now obviously Hull, not very good. But as we've seen, they have a bit of bite about them. They can score the goal. So you want players who can do something. So Bradshaw might come back in. Uh, especially like... I think Barrett said the, the way he plays, he can't do that, like the pressing game, you can't do that uh, three games in a week, and three games in seven days. That's why they play Vogelsammer up there. Now, will Vogelsammer get dropped? Because playing up front and then playing on the... He, I think he, he played on the, on the wing against uh, Huddersfield, played up front against Birmingham. So, can he play three in, three in seven days? Probably not. So. Is Tyler Berry going to come in? Is Shackleton or Styles going to come in? We'll, we'll see. Um, hopefully whoever comes in uh, can do what they need to do and help us win the game. And uh, we shall see. So if we go back to Mill's home games, you can see. 2-1 against West Brom last time out. Uh, two clean sheets before that. Clean sheet against Cardiff. Bow to score against QPR. That was, I believe, before the formation change. Formation change happened. Uh, the Rotherham game, which was on the 3rd of October. So, since then, it's been all hunky dory except for against Huddersfield. Uh, Mill strengths and weaknesses. Hull strengths and weaknesses. Ooh, okay. Uh, that looks good for Millwall there, doesn't it? That does look good for us. Um, so, match forecast. Millwall will create many scoring chances. Likely. Hull will score a long shot. Likely. Uh, Millwall will control the game in the opposition half. Likely. Indeed. That sounds very good. So let's move on to the prediction now. Stop the waffling. Let's get on with it. Um, so here we go. There's the missing players. Um, match facts there have been over two and a half goals scored in five polls last six away games indeed lots of goals at both ends Hull have conceded at least two goals in five of the last six away matches Millwall are undefeated in their last five home matches against Hull in all competitions indeed so prediction Millwall could find no way past the start of Birmingham defence on Wednesday night as they were forced to settle for a goalless draw at St Andrews. Garrow outside have won four league games on the bounce at the den. Hull were well, the perpetrators of their own downfall in midweek, scoring two second half own goals in a 3 1 home defeat to Middlesbrough. The Tigers have a new man in the dugout for the trip to South London and will hope to build some early momentum as they look to put distance between themselves and the relegation zone. And the prediction is Millwall 1, Hull 0. Um, that's kind of uh, not what Hull do, but uh, would be interesting. I look, just looking on the right here, they've got strikers who scored 8 goals already. Estepinian? Eh? Who's, who's that? Never heard of him. Seems good though. Uh, so, let's move on to David Pryor's predictions from SkySports.com. What do you think he had to say about it? Well, let's find out. Where are we? Where are we? Ah, oh, here we are. So David Pryor predicts Millwall 1, hole 0. Again, kind of a normal score. Not really a whole score. Um... So they're both agreeing that they think it's going to be one that nil to Millwall. So I, looking at how crazy uh, Hull's defence and attack have been in their away games so far this season, 
I want to see if there's precedence for that kind of game happening in history. No, there isn't. Not really. Well, 3-2 to Millwall in 1979. 3-2 defeat in 1968. And that was at the end of September. 3-3 uh, free, free draw in 1990. Um, so, I'm probably going to go for Scorigami. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be Millwall 3, Hole 1. I think it's going to be 3-1 to Millwall, which hasn't happened at the Den uh, in this fixture before. That will be a first. Yeah. That's my prediction. Millwall 3, Hole City 1. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.